episode of the Buffalo Happy Hour. Mike, what's going on? Uh, Derek, we were driving down the street. We saw an outdoor bar, so we pulled over, <laughs> grabbed all of our equipment, <laughs> and now we're here. So it's not exactly what happened. No, but. no, not at all. But we are in East Aurora, and we have a lot of things to dive into. So if you're new, please like, comment, and subscribe to our channel. We would greatly appreciate it. It would help us grow which in turn helps our businesses grow that we work with, including yours. So you want to introduce yourself and then we'll dive right into all things Tap Truck. Sure. My name is Paige Hutter and I am one of the co-owners of Tap Truck Buffalo, along with my mom, Lynn. Um, and it's a women-run business that we started back in March and it has just taken off and flown higher than we ever would have anticipated. What did you What did you think when you started this? That it was just going to be a fun thing to do and then it just bloomed? Yeah, we were kind of anticipating. We had the idea in our heads. I had it in my head for a while. Um, we tossed around the idea pretty heavily last fall and we finally got the ball moving in january february we bought the business um the truck shipped out in march we had arrived on a thursday we had our first event saturday at my house we pulled the truck up on our front yard and i gave away four kegs worth of 42 north beer nice. and to about 150 people that just stopped by and we were anticipating hoping for five to ten events this se first season we are at 48 really? um, and we just finished a stint of eight events in 11 days and then we have uh six or seven events already booked for next season so oh it, it is so <laughs> that's wild. Yeah, it just, is a beast of its own. What is your like jurisdiction, for lack of better terms? Like, where do you like to stick to? Because I don't want to see you on Shark Tank. That's okay. So Tap Truck <laughs> Buffalo, we have the licensing through Tap Truck USA. A little bit of background is Tap Truck USA is the parent company. They are based out of San Diego, California. They're two awesome dudes, Taylor and Corbin. They started this, and they have licensings all over the country. So we have Tap Truck Buffalo, and we have the licensing for the eight counties of Western. New York. So we go down to nice. the Pennsylvania line up to Lake Ontario. That's really cool. So is it kind of like a franchise type deal in a sense? In a sense, yes, okay. but no, because I operate my business how I want to. So I set my prices. I set the look, the feel of everything. The only thing they, they provide us with a lot of back end help. So it's more or less like how to get my truck up and running, how to do the back end stuff of pricing and books and guidance along how to run it, but not necessarily you have to run it this mm -hmm. way. If you look on Tap Truck um, all over Instagram, there's Tap Trucks across the country and everybody operates differently. We all run different vehicles, but it's a really awesome community where we can reach out, we can have conversations with other people saying, hey, I have this massive event coming up. Tap Truck Rochester just opened. So if I have another massive event, I can reach out to Chris and say, hey, can you come mm. help me? Can you bring your truck in? And then there's Ramon and Sarah Toga are the two closest to us. So you mentioned everybody has a different vehicle. What mm -hmm. made you settle on this specific truck? So <laughs> Frankie, I named her. She is our 1950 Ford. She is an old steak bed truck and she runs a 327 Chevy engine. Corbin and Taylor had a bunch of vehicles for sale when we were looking this one just stuck with me i love it i'm 510 i don't want to be crawling in the back of a milk van trying to right. tap kegs and moving 180 pound kegs all of like the ice and the cooler syst cooling systems um so i love the nostalgia of the old vehicle i love old vehicles in general mm -hmm. so this was just a really good marriage for where we wanted to be and the look that we wanted to have so how do you go about finding one um, like the right one for you I don't know. We're honestly already looking for a second vehicle oh, okay. and I've been looking since March and I don't anticipate it coming for another year or so. It's just, I want to find something classic, but I also have to be realistic in the sense that I found like an old 48 Studebaker. Um, they're limited production and they were made 70 some years ago. Mm -hmm. So finding parts for that <laughs> to carry around an extra thousand pounds of keg isn't, I need to be smart and realistic in where I'm going with yeah. it. I like that you did go with this style and said, like you were saying, a box truck or something. Because yeah. I feel like even if you go to a craft beer festival in Buffalo, that's all you see are box trucks. Mm -hmm. And there's a place for them for sure. But this adds so much character. And just knowing you for half hour now i know that this is like you down to a t already it is it's super we have i have more people stop and talk to me because of just the look of the mm -hmm. truck i have there's the old ashtray within the truck 
and that houses my business cards because nice. when we drive around people stop us on the corner and like can I get a beer I'm like <laughs> not right now but you can hire me and here's our card so I hand them out that way but it's definitely a conversation piece sure so how does that work legally like you mentioned at a red light obviously you can't <laughs> although in the town of East Aurora it's not too out of the, the realm of possibilities <laughs> but what legally you mentioned that the two owners in San Diego have uh, San Diego correct yep. okay have like all the licensing and things mm-hmm. like that so is that that it's got to differ state to state it does so like our licensing through them is more or less just for the tap truck name every state got varies it. with regards to liquor license in New York State you can't get a mobile liquor license um, so we do one day beer wine cider permits so we pull a permit for every event and it allows us to serve anything besides hard liquor so we'll do beer, wine, cider, seltzers, champagne, um, pretty much anything but the hard stuff. It's got to be stressful doing one-day licenses. It's really not. Really? Um, the SLA is pretty good. Their website is pretty transparent on what you need to provide. It's the same form over and over again. It's 36 bucks every time you do it. Oh, and, no kidding. Yeah. So it's not unreasonable fee-wise, and they're really good at getting back to you and letting you know if there's an error mm-hmm. or if there's something that needs to be corrected. Um, and then they issue about a couple, anywhere between like a week to four days, sure. three days before the event. And there's, because it's the state, I'm assuming there's no like, hey, I have 50 events this season. Can I do it all in one shot? I mean, I could totally apply for them, but you're limited with your events per location. So you can pull the same one person or one company can pull one, can pull up to four permits for the same location within a 12 month like period. A, yeah. Okay. Um, and then there's no like massive discount on no. forms. Oh no. Okay. It's the yeah. same 10 right. step process. Okay. Same Perfect. forms that you have to have. Are there certain counties or areas that are more difficult to work with, or are they all pretty the same? It's New York State, so it doesn't sure. so, vary. Okay. Some of the municipalities, if we do pop-ups, can um, be a little more cumbersome with regards to getting the proper permits for mm-hmm. the villages or the towns, but we haven't had too many issues so far. So was there ever a thought, you said that you bought the, the kind of licensing for the name from San Francisco mm-hmm. or San Diego. Is there any thought of not going with the name and just creating a tap truck-like business or were you more focused on the community i was more focused on the community and it's a back-end thing that helps me quite a bit with what they i can rely on them for a lot of stuff so i still reach out to corbin um and then also because they have the whole tap truck usa parent company um sam who is our it guy that we work with through him all of the instagrams the all the Facebook pages, everything was established and it has really good traffic to begin with. Sure. So it would be stupid for me to kind of wipe all of that out and start fresh when right. I already had a really good foundation going to to start mm-hmm. with. Yeah, there's a good question, but once we understand what it is, it's kind of a bad question yeah. because now we understand like what it actually <laughs> encompasses. That's yeah. wild. So you mentioned before we uh, went live mm-hmm. that your products change in regards to the event. Mm-hmm. So with a school, you did like a massive lemonade yeah. pop-up. So with Tap Truck, it's pretty, our truck is pretty versatile. So it's Tap Truck Buffalo. Yes, we're a beer truck, or that's our main um, product that we pour from the truck. But we have the versatility to do a lot of other products mm-hmm. as well. So Viddler's is a local five and dime in town, which mm-hmm. we all love. And we did their 90th plus one anniversary party, and they wanted all NA options. So we did Loganberry, Sweet Tea, Pink Lemonade, Regular Lemonade, um, Fruit Punch, and Water. And so we were able to pour in the pouring rain for all of the people that came out to celebrate. And then my kids go to Parkdale, and we poured 650 lemonades to all the kiddos at their send-off to summer event, which was pretty awesome. Yeah. Are you able, like if I booked Tap Truck, am mm-hmm. I able to request the six beers that come with it? So we go up to five different beers in our packages. Okay. So we have four, five different package options. Nailed it. Derek there's, always, yeah, no. Derek's always trying to go yeah. above and beyond. He's <laughs> oh, yeah. like, I want 30 yeah. options. <laughs> there's, well, there is six taps on there. I always have an NA option. I think gotcha. it's important yeah. to push water. There's always something that it's good to have. Right. Plus, yeah. the more options you give people, the more complaints you get that you didn't have a sour or a porter or the better I. 
IPA that they wanted. So uh, limiting some of the options works out better for us. So we have different package options and they start with our 716 package, which is two domestic options. So whether you have 50 people or 500 people, you get two domestic options. And then our next package goes to our shout package, which is two domestics, one craft. Mm. And we'll gauge the volume of beer that we bring every time based on how many people you have. Um, but those are the options that you have. And then from there, we have a little bit louder now, which is two and two. Nice. And then we have our full hey, 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 which is up to five different beers. So what That's kind awesome. of lead time would you prefer? Because I know there's some people where it's like, sorry, I forgot about this aspect or, you know, yada, yada. But what do you like to have? So if you could put out like a PSA. Um, I mean, for when we are, when you're not on private property, we have to pull the permits. So those have to be pulled within 15 days of the SLA. They are strict in the timeline. So I need- When to, not on private property? Uh, yeah. So like if you're at a house party, yeah. um, they buy the beer and then we're the service that serves it. Um, so we mm. don't pull permits for private houses. Which saves you money. Correct. And then um, what's your lead time for that? Uh, I mean, if we're available and I can get the beer, you can give me a week. Um, but I also, we, last week we did a funeral and obviously there's no lead time on right, that. Yeah. So Hopefully. <laughs> yeah, right. um, we heard, um, I had somebody reach out to me on a Sunday and we poured on Tuesday. Oh, nice. Wow. So okay. We are pretty quick. As long as we have the availability, we're open for it. And then the only thing, the beer we usually order the week before just to make sure I can get the kegs in. Sure. So for private parties or for on private property, mm -hmm. you, it has to be before 15 days that they have to let you know, right? Uh, no, the private, yes, if it's not on private property, we need at least 15 days. Okay. So three weeks out is what I recommend just because I need paperwork signed mm -hmm. and um, to have make sure and I get everything back. in there. Yeah. Now, for say it is a private event, we mm -hmm. should probably talk about the one friend that follows you no matter where you go. Oh, yeah. Um, which, if anybody saw me look down, it was because I thought one was up my shirt. <laughs> one is not, so we're doing good. But let's touch on that piece, just because that's definitely going to matter. It does. With so. certain audiences. <laughs> so we, because of the beers and there's, like right now on tap is Bud Light, Landon Kugel, Summer Shandy, EBC Blueberry, and then Clarksburg Semi-Sweet Cider. The bees follow us. Um, <laughs> it happens. And then there's Loganberry and there's Fruit Punch. So that's even more sweet. Yeah. Um, they follow us. They stay to the truck. I mean, they come out every once in a while, but they really don't. I don't know. I've knock on wood, never gotten stung. We haven't had any issues with them, but they do follow us quite heavily. I'm, ass I'm assuming you're not scared of bees? No. No. Would Were you, you ever, like, when they first started, like, why are they so much? Yes, oh, initially, sense. and then I would, like, try to hit them away, and I'm like, well, this isn't doing anything, and they're really not <laughs> bothering us, so I'm like, there's no right. point to um, sure. really bug it. So, for events, is it just you and your mom that go to do that? Mainly, yes, but we do have some other people that help us out. Um, we were fortunate enough to do an event that was a thousand people mm. so we had eight bartenders where wow. <laughs> the financial guys up in um williamsville so they had an awesome uh customer appreciation nerds gone wild played oh, cool. there was anderson's food truck coyote cafe um mr munch our house of munch was there and they did a superb job of supplying everything so it was just a great evening in general but we had eight bartenders nobody waited more than two minutes for a beer which nice. i was very proud of that's really cool there's nothing worse than that 20 minute beer line and then you're thirsty by the time you order two and then you just really should circle back in line mm. so do you have a, a like a number of guests that you're comfortable with like i stick around 100 or is 50 is our minimum okay. just more or less because we're dealing in kegs mm -hmm. we can go lower i don't it's not necessarily cost effective if you have less than 50 um again there's just a lot of costs mm. on our end but i like the 100 to 150 parties but we've done weddings up to 250 and we've mm -hmm. had no issue and we'll have three bartenders then. It's pretty cool to do this for a wedding. It's a really good idea. It is. I feel like you have so many options between events. It is. I honestly, as, fun, as much fun as weddings can be, I love the corporate parties. I love, we were at the Stalka Agency last Friday. They were fabulous to work with. We've done happy hours for some law firms in town. Um, I really like those because it's other business people. You have great conversations. Mm -hmm. You meet people. We've done baby showers. We've done Jack and Jill bachelorettes. 
Yeah. Um, I mean, there is no limit really of what we can do. And it's been pretty fun to see kind of what people have in mind. And I love people when they see the truck and they're like, oh my gosh, how can we have a party to make this work? Um, and so it's getting people thinking of like, what party can we throw? Yeah, they um, use you as a centerpiece. Yes. Yeah, that's so really it cool. works out really cool. Those conversations are always fun to have. How many miles are on the truck? Do you know? Uh, on this engine, there's 1,200. That's nuts. It's a new engine. It's yeah. a 327, so it's a Chevy engine. Yeah. She cruises at a solid 70 down the 400. <laughs> um, but yeah, there's so there's only there's limited miles on this engine. That's Do you amazing. still work full time? Um, is this this is gig? taking over. Good for you. So I am mid jack of all trades, master of none. Um, <laughs> I'm I with am, you. Yes. So I raise my three kids by myself. So I I make things. I piece things together so that I can be at their soccer games and their mm-hmm. lacrosse games and I can still coach and be a part of their school events. You coach as well? I help coach um, the my daughter's lacrosse team and her soccer team. Did you play lacrosse? I did. Do you miss it? Um, like what's, I, what's the transition to coach? It, I honestly never had any desire to and I was asked this season my youngest daughter will be eight next in November and they needed coaches so I said I would help out and they I fell in love with it so it's our Eastera EALA our Eastera Lacrosse Association is our local program and they are phenomenal with building up what we can the boys program is by far one of the best um, and our girls program is still developing so I'm really finding how much I enjoy it and how much I want to continue to help build that girls program because the girls side of lacrosse could is there's a lot of potential for East Shore to excel at it I feel like you would just polite about it (laughs) but still like be the coach and yell like cradle cradle like lift your stick (laughs) I can totally picture you yelling at kids (laughs) I am a no BS person I like to have fun but um there you gotta win yes well I I just I I my take on parenting in general too and just with coaching is it's a dictatorship Mm -hmm. like I do not it's not a democracy I'm not um that there's rules and we'll follow them and we'll have fun along the way but we're not going to do this yeah so did um, you always grow up in East Aurora I grew up in Elma, okay. and so I went okay. to Iroquois High School, mm-hmm. and then oh, yeah. I lived... Like that, me too. Yeah, there you go. Oh, perfect. Let's talk about the Native <laughs> Americans coming over with their totem poles, scaring everyone. Um, so I lived away. I went to school in Boston. I moved back, and then I bought my house here in the village seven years ago. Nice. Did you go to, like, did you go to BC? I went to Northeastern. I did my grad work Good in Northeastern. Good for you. That's amazing. Grad work yeah. in what? Speech pathology. Look at that. We just had a speech speech path on last week as yeah. I struggled to say that. <laughs> yeah. We just, it's, yeah. Yeah. it's fine. It's fine. It's, it's fine. okay. I don't use my degrees, but it works. I have them. That's, that's awesome. That's so incredible. You just kind of took this on and you're just like, we're going to make it work. Yeah. I wanted something. I So my younger brother, um, he got married four years ago down in Charleston. And in the midst of bridal chaos and getting ready, I needed a break. So I took a walk. <laughs> and there was a woman that had a trailer, like an old horse trailer. And she was selling boozy ice pops. Mm. So it was like boozy freezy pops. I'm like, this is freaking brilliant. So ever since then, I've had the idea in the back of my head. Mm-hmm. It was just more or less trying to figure out the logistics of packages of getting the liquor license um and trying to figure out a lot of it so it sat in my head for a while and then when this opportunity came up i'm like you know what this is going to give me the flexibility where i can dictate my schedule i can dictate my income which is one thing that's important to me managing three kids they are getting older they are expensive Mm -hmm. sports are expensive (laughs) which is ridiculous (laughs) yes Yes, it is and not even just the equipment but the fees for everything (laughs) and then they're growing so quickly that it's new cleats every single season. It's And even sometimes from soccer to lacrosse, just that six months is a new set of cleats. True. Um, so, I, yeah. I still remember that conversation growing up where it was, you literally can only play one sport. So pick one you love and that's it. <laughs> because you can you can only sell so much cookie dough. You know what I mean? Uh, yes. Like the booster club's only doing so yes. much. Like we, I don't know what you want from us. Like I we can't know. do this. I've always said no hockey because I'm like, I don't want the ice times. I don't right. want. And if there was goalie. 5 yeah, it's always 5 a.m. Like, Equipment's well, expensive. Mm, yeah, that mm. or it's like a super late travel thing. Yeah, and if no your kid's not you. traveling, they're not cool. And then you got to deal with your kid getting bullied. Yeah. I'm like, you know what? 
And then the hotels and the (laughs) meals out. Yeah, no thank you. So that's one thing. But they do soccer, um, lacrosse, volleyball, and possibly baseball. We'll see. But It's really crazy to dive into the parenting aspect around the business because (laughs) honestly though we do spend a lot of time about business but Mm -hmm. and like promoting what you do and things like that but there's there's so much more to life other than running the small business that i honestly i think it's important to touch Mm -hmm. on yeah but they're involved within the business so granted that they're kids but they do work so my oldest daughter she clearly (laughs) yeah she knew how to pull that tab really i mean sometimes she likes to get a little tom cruise and cocktail and she'll bring it all the way down to the ground she'll bring it back up she's got tricks up her sleeve um but the thousand person event cameron bar backed for me so i had her hustling Hmm. and they get paid to come down and they get paid five dollars an hour and they help me move kegs they help fill up ice we have to run down um i bartend in elma at maddie's and so i get ice from maddie's and the kids come they help me they fill up coolers they move stuff around they stock things that's awesome um they're required to help it's not an option so they're a part of all of it that's so cool yeah it is so we talked about kind of the community around it and how the closest is Rochester and then mm-hmm. after that is further away. Why do you think people haven't adopted this in Buffalo yet and you're kind of leading that charge? I don't know. There is one other guy, it's Vintage Taps, so he was here before. Um, I I don't know. I think it's just, I honestly, I have no freaking clue. Yeah. <laughs> Which is fine. I think yeah. people like the food trucks and they're awesome. This is just another piece of things. Mm-hmm. And I don't know that people thought it could be done, but um, it's fun and what we're doing. And I'll take it for where we are right now and continue to grow with it. Which is true. I feel like more people in New York specifically are kind of put off at like, how is this possible in New mm-hmm. York? Because you're always thinking about the legal aspect of it. Yes. And then now I feel like people are starting to think and say, well, why not? Exactly. And then it's like, what do we have to do to make this work? And like, what's the process? Chances. And nine times out of 10, the state already has something in place for it. So it's like, yes. you're just the first person willing to go through the hoops. Yes. Or they make something work with it so they can yeah. figure something out. But I have um, one of my old colleagues is an attorney and he's helped me with a lot of stuff on the end. Oh, Thank nice. you, Hughes. Um, but he's been fantastic with just making sure that we are on track to what we need to be and that we're protected as well. Wow. That's so, awesome. Yeah. So what is the protection piece of it? We I mean, do people like, come at you? No, or is not, it kind of just knock like... Knock on wood. Right, knock on wood. <laughs> or just is like it just like... just like our releases, like okay. to make sure like the liability, like that we there's a liability statement. We have our client contract, just making sure that our payments are accepted mm-hmm. and there's like a timeline of when payments need to be submitted. Um, just kind of something in writing to make sure that we are being compensated for the... The work you're doing. Yeah, for the yeah. work that we're doing and that everything's good. So speaking of knocking on wood, you built these things, and we got to talk yes. about this because it's <laughs> wild. Uh, so you have two, one bar, and then just like storage in a garbage area. So these are the two bars. Okay, two so bars. this is our six foot bar. It's the taller one. This is the one we built first. So my mom and I actually built everything. Um, we had my grandpa's wood shop, and we like to build things. So this is what we came up with. And then we're like, well, we have a lot of crap, so maybe we need to build a second bar. So that's where the shorter bar came in. Um, But everything, we made sure everything assembles without any tools. So our bars come in four pieces. There's two sides, the front and the top. And then there's shelves on the inside, but everything snaps together pretty quickly. It's like Lincoln Logs. (laughs) It is. So it takes us um, about a half hour to fully set up. We usually get to events an hour beforehand, just more or less because the beer needs to settle. But then our breakdown time for an event is, our top time is 13 minutes, which I was very proud of. I time (laughs) us every time. But we have the two bars, we have two garbage cans, um, and we bring everything with us. But everything that we have, this stuff we've built. So That's all awesome. this fits in a trailer. In the a trailer. trailer gets pulled or hauled. Yeah. I'm sorry, towed, towed. by the truck. No, by a my a different vehicle. My mom's car tows it. I don't have a tow package. No so, kidding. Yeah. Okay, cool. Not on this. I don't Frankie is temperamental, so I don't want to I don't want to push her limits. <laughs> yeah, no, when I have that's a thousand fair. pounds of beer in the back. The next the next one. It is. It's the next one is we're already thinking of how we can accommodate so that we don't have to have an auxiliary vehicle or mm-hmm. if we do right. it would be we actually have a lead on being able to purchase um, four old school ice cream trucks 
Um, oh, cool. So they're like the short buses that are refrigerated. So if we did that, we would turn one of those into auxiliary um, vehicles with that would house um, the bars and everything else. So with driving with all the beer in there, how long does it take the beer to settle? It depends. Uh, one, how far we're traveling. Two, how full the kegs are. Mm-hmm. The less full they are, the more rattled they become. And if it's a straight shot, like it's not terrible, um, but usually about an hour or so it'll take for everything to settle so that we can get everything going and it'll pour where it's not foamy. Mm-hmm. Um, if not, it'll normally pour foamy for a little bit. Now for the maintenance aspect of it, mm-hmm. I don't want to dive too much into your secrets, it's but okay. what is the cleaning aspect? I'm a clean freak. That's so okay. like, how do you clean this? operation yeah. so we have a system that we got through keg works and then we've kind of altered it to fit it and become more efficient for us because to me time is money mm-hmm. and i don't want to be spending 45 50 minutes if i can get it down to 20 minutes yes um so we clean all the lines after each event so a lot of times we'll run water through them first and then it comes this cleaning solution it runs through the kegs um, and all the tap lines and then that sits for 20 minutes or so and then while we're getting other stuff done and then we just flush the lines nice so, okay and then That's once, easy enough yeah like once a month we'll take everything apart we'll take all the taps off like we'll and then we'll do a deep clean everything once a month wow That's awesome yeah yeah i love this this is so <laughs> cool so in addition to taps do you also offer like other beverages too yeah so okay. we can do anything but the hard liquor so we serve wine out of a bottle we do white claws um we actually have my mom made this awesome divider system in one of our big coolers so that when nothing worse than when you're, somebody asks for a white cloth fav- flavor and you're digging to the bottom mm-hmm. of the cooler and your hand is frozen <laughs> um so she used some corrugated plastic and it's this nice little interlocking system so there's little compartments so white claws are a big hit for us and then we do champagne toast as well so the wedding coming up this weekend we'll have a champagne toast for you guys are so crafty <laughs> i know was it did it stress you out getting into the wedding industry um yes yeah I, i'm uh, is it because of the word it's just more or less um weddings bring out a lot of stress in particular women and it can create a lot of unnecessary back and forth sure. and a lot of unnecessary additional stress mm-hmm. um where it's easy like i know what my job is i do my job well and I understand if like somebody isn't familiar with it it's like kind of that freak out of like what are we doing like do you have this okay do we what do i need to get um where it's like we'll just come we'll show up like relax it'll be okay um but i not that i don't want to fully dive into the wedding industry but it's not the market like our primary focus of finding that market Mm -hmm. so what is your consultation aspect like if somebody reaches out to you via Instagram or, um, which while we're on that topic, how do people reach out really so quick? So email is the best way. Email, We okay. do have a phone number. I am not the best at answering <laughs> it, and I let the phone die quite a bit um, just because I, I'm very forgetful with it. Carrying two phones around is mm-hmm. a pain in the butt. Right. Um, so we have on our website, we have an inquiry page that you can go to and you can fill out an a uh, request and it comes right to my email. Usually get a response within 12 hours at the most. Um, sometimes if I'm, I don't know if I'm traveling or something with the kids, it might be a little bit longer. And then I'll shoot everybody back an email and it'll have like the package info. It'll have our pricing and then it'll kind of give people an idea. Um, if we ha- don't have the date available, I let people know right away just saying, Hey, we don't have this date available. Here's the info if you need it. But if you are flexible in your date, we can definitely work mm-hmm. around it. Okay, cool. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, it is. It's honestly very streamlined. Yeah, it is. And our package, like our package info, all of our package info is listed on our website with regards to what they offer. The pricing isn't included. That is not on our website. But if you shoot me an email, everything that I send, like a PDF file, everything's in there. It describes what we have. It gives kind of an overview of what beer options are available. But Mm -hmm. it's a very, very, very small view of what we're able to get. That's crazy. Yeah. 
it's yeah. awesome like that we have so many options and I love to work with local places. Mm -hmm. That was my next question. So yeah. are you partnering with anybody like consumers? Like or... 42 North like you were talking about? Yeah, so 42 North I love. John Simberman has been awesome to us. Um, so he actually let us do Frank, put Frankie out front a couple of times. Nice. We did tastings. He's been fantastic. They do have their tap trekker. So they have an awesome sprinter van that they can physically load pallets of kegs into the back of it. They operate on a much larger mm -hmm. system than yeah, we Yeah, that's do. wild. Yeah, so they're like 1,000 people events. I'm like, and we can do it, um, but that's not, our truck is geared more for like- 800 people less. Sure. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Um, so 42 North, I we are running a local special. It's like an East Aurora EMW special from the two hometowns that I grew up in, um, where it's, you get a keg of domestic and a quarter keg from 42 North. And that's, we push 42 North beer. Mm -hmm. And then Clarksburg Cider House is new in Lancaster. Their tap room just opened. And that they place are, is sweet. They are amazing. I drove past the other day. I'm like, what is going on it here? It is so good. And you guys are bourbon drinkers. So mm -hmm. they are aging some of their ciders in old bourbon oh, barrels. Cool. And it is delicious. And we did a derby party back in May. And they were awesome to work with. They made a custom small batch mint julep cider for us. Nice. And it was freaking delicious. It was so good. Yeah, that's really cool. Yeah, so, so I try to push as many local brands as I can. Um, it doesn't always happen, but. Are you able to do cocktails out of kegs? You could. Like just ma batch make cocktails? We could cocktails? batch them yeah. and pour them, yeah. That'd Except I cool. won't do hard liquor. Yeah, true. <laughs> Sloppy. <laughs> it, it, yeah, yeah, it'll catch up quick. So yes. And you consider vodka hard liquor? <laughs> yes. Okay, so I that's mean, fine. It is. I mean, <laughs> it is. So like it's like the, the number one hard if, liquor. If yeah. you're from South Buffalo, it's not. But it's like we'll talk about it. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah exactly. so like our seltzers that we do, we do like White Claws is our biggest yeah. thing. We don't do High Noon because it's a vodka based seltzer. Mm -hmm. So we have to do the malt based seltzers. But. Interesting. Yeah. So next is another another truck that you're looking at. Mm -hmm. um, anything else next that you're looking at getting into or a certain event that you want to get into? Um, honestly, at this point, I'm just hoping to get through the season and having a success. <laughs> Seriously. Yeah. True. This has been a whirlwind of a summer of not, it is nothing that we ever anticipated. So I'm kind of taking it all one day at a time, one minute at a time some days. Um, I'm a napper and I haven't had a nap in like a week. <laughs> I just want a nap. I am not okay. <laughs> yeah. That's interesting actually. So seasons. Are yeah, well, you anticipating a big load for winter? Are you putting no it away idea. for winter? Yeah. No, I mean, I will drive her whenever. It doesn't bother me. Um, I mean, if anything, it'll help keep your beer cold. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. I will use less ice. Mm -hmm. um, I have no qualms about using her throughout the entire year. I just don't know what it'll look like. Mm -hmm. um, Is she weatherproof? Like I'm, undercoated? Like what, what has been done to the truck I to mean, make it? I it, mean, it rained yesterday and I got rain through the hood on my feet. So I'm going to say no. <laughs> so <laughs> She came from I San Diego. Yeah. Like True. she literally had, there was, and I referred to her as a she because her name is Frankie. Um, but there was literally sand. It's a woman run business. The, it it is. Be she. Everything in my life is a female. <laughs> We're too awesome not to be. Um, Except your boyfriend. Exactly. He's yeah. he's okay. Yeah, we'll, we'll help him out. <laughs> we'll, we'll throw him a bone. Yes. Um, but we, like, there was sand in the flatbed of this. So she has never seen weather. Um, we will store her over the winter. Mm -hmm. um, but if the opportunity comes, like, our latest scheduled event right now is October 16th. Gotcha. Which... There's been an October storm before, so. I know. Yeah. So you never know. <laughs> you never know. Everything will work out. It'll be fine. Everything's fine. It's yeah. always fine. Exactly. I try not to stress. It'll See? be good no matter what. She sounds what. like me. It's awesome. Everything's, yeah, everything's fine. fine. It is. Yeah. And it always works out. Like, there's some days where the beer pours, like, absolute garbage, and it's exhausting, where I have to pour it into pitchers, and it's just frustrating. I can't get it the pressure right. I, there's... The ice it makes a difference. Like I found that out. I used the wrong ice, and it created air pockets within our coolers. Wrong ice. It was like the ice from Tops. So like when it gets, it melts a little bit, and no then free it shout freezes. outs, Tops. Let's <laughs> <on. laughs> yeah. Um, it like blocks up, so it like makes these massive ice chunks, and oh, it doesn't okay. settle to the bottom. Where like the bar ice will just continually to it'll continue to settle to the bottom of the coolers. Hmm. Um, so it doesn't create those air pockets so I don't have change of temperature in my coil lines. Wow. So what was the learning curve on getting the right pressure? A lot. Yeah. I'm still figuring it out. Sure. Um, beers are all different. I. That's true too because there's different kinds of beers. 
it's uh huh. Yes. Yeah, you're like, yeah, welcome to my life. Yes. This is miserable. I'm with yes. you. Yes. Um, shout out to Brian Ziddle from Nickel City Brews who helped me with some of my tap lines. Mm-hmm. Um, he had a good point about some of the regulators that I didn't clearly sure. figure out. You're like, oh yeah, let I'm me like, just that, dive into like, my brewing yeah. notebook. <laughs> yeah. But I'm like, it was so it was so stupid what I was doing wrong because I was looking at things left to right, and he goes, no, your first tap is on your right because it's where the primary source comes through. I was like, oh, oh, gotcha. I wouldn't have thought of that either. Yeah, brilliant. See I'm, Brian. Th- see, he was fantastic. <laughs> He's like Paige. I'm like, I, I know. I'll yeah. get there. This is what we need. Yeah, yeah. This we is learned you- something at every event, so that's what we learned at that event. There yeah. you go. So that's sweet. So one more time, you want to give your yeah. Instagram and your Facebook and your website just so people sure. can reach out. So Tap Truck Buffalo is our handle for Facebook and Instagram. Our email is hello at taptruckbuffalo.com and our website is taptruckbuffalo.com. Super simple, streamlined. I love um, it. Love yeah. It. Yeah. Well, Hello. thank you so much for your time. Yeah. This is sweet. I love this business model. I love the truck. It's thank beautiful you. and it's just it's a sweet business. <laughs> yeah, it's really cool. <laughs> it's been awesome so far. So awesome. Well, thank you so much for your time. Thank we appreciate you so it. much. Cheers to the future. Cheers. Cheers.